Hey friends, what is up and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title of today's video, I wanted to sit down and talk to you about all of the series I have on my shelves that I need to finish. Now, some of these I'm on the second book, some of these I'm on the last one. One of these, I'm not actually sure if it's going to be a trilogy or if there's going to be four books in the series, but I did want to sit down and talk to you guys today about the books that I have on my shelves that are part of a set that I need to finish. Now, obviously I have excluded duologies because I tend to read those as I get them, as well as they're not series. So they're not going to be in this video. Now, some of these I am in the second part of the series, some of these I'm on the last book in the series, and I did just want to sit down and talk to you about it today. Let me know if you are reading any of these and what you thought of the overall wrap up without spoilers. I don't really want to know spoilers on them, but I would like to know what you guys thought of them. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. Now this first series that I'm going to talk about, I actually don't know what the overall series is called, like at all at all, but it'd be And I Darken. There's And I Darken, Now I Rise, and I believe the third one is called Bright we burn. I am on Now I Rise. I read this book and loved it, so I don't know why I haven't really picked anything else up by her. I mean, I read other books by her, but this is the book that I think really got me into Kirsten's writing. If you guys don't know this, I love her retellings. I think that they're a lot of fun. I feel like the fact that there are always pretty badass female main characters, and they're really, for me, realistically badass <laughs> in a way. Like, they are very flawed. They are very... I don't know, just deep to me at least. And I really, really liked this. This is a female Vlad the Impaler retelling and it was really odd to find a book like that and I did fall in love with the series. So I don't know why I haven't continued. I think I gave this one four stars. I know a lot of people who've read this find it very, I don't know, kind of convoluted and hard to follow, but I really genuinely enjoyed it. I do like that there is a lot of different places that the characters travel to, so there's a lot of different cultures that they get to experience, a lot of different types of people, if you will, and I'm really sad that I haven't finished it and I do need to get around to it. Now this next series I have, once again, I don't know what it is called. It's called The Shadow, I guess, is the Shadow series. I'm not sure, but it is Wake of Vultures by Lila Bowen. I am currently reading Conspiracy of Ravens, which is the third one, no, is the second one. I believe there are four, maybe five books. I think I saw that a fifth one was coming out, but I do own the first four. I really, really like this series. This series follows our main character, Nettie Lonesome. We actually read this for the quarterly, what was the quarterly book club at the time. Now it's the bi-monthly book club, Read, Rate, Review. I'll leave a link to that down below for Goodreads. But we read this and I was one of the only people that really enjoyed it. And the reason why I think I really enjoy it is Nettie is a character who really struggles with her identity or their identity. They're not necessarily non-binary because of the I don't know, like the time frame of the book, but you do see them kind of struggling with that. She does, he, she does dress up as a boy for a lot of the book, but she still identifies as a woman. So it is kind of confusing at times, but this is a Western, but it is a supernatural Western. So there are vampires, there are mythical creatures in it, and it's really, really cool. I don't know why I haven't continued, but I know by now I should have already gobbled up the series because of how much I like this one. So I'm really excited to continue on with my read of Conspiracy of Ravens. If you're into Westerns and you're into like supernatural stuff, I think you'd really like this one. Now this next series I'm gonna talk about, I did recently haul this book, so I do finally have it. And that's part of the reason why I hadn't read it by now. And it would be Nixia Uprising. This is part of the Nixia Triad. It is just a trilogy by Scott Rankin. I actually read the first one from NetGalley and I really genuinely loved it. It's just called Nixia. And I, oh my God, this series follows our main character Emmett and him along with a bunch of rather impoverished young adults are sent to work with a company called Genesis. And they basically hold a trial for these kids to battle it out, to make it to a planet to mine something called Nixia. That is at the basis of it, what this series is about, but it's a lot more than that. I feel like Scott does a really good job of making friends seem like family. Like you really start to care for these characters and you really start to care for their relationships. And that is one of the reasons why I really like this. Now, I will say it is a sci-fi semi-dystopian dystopian novel and dystopians are not my favorite but the sci-fi aspect of this is actually one of the reasons why I started reading more sci-fi because I was kind of blown away with how much I loved this it is a pretty simple series I would say it's probably like teen to YA genre but I really love it I think that for me my favorite part are the characters Bilal is my favorite and I feel like he's not even like the main character but he is my favorite and I'm excited to see where the series ends for him and where it ends for everybody else the second book has a little bit more politics to it so it does get a little bit heavier a little bit 
I don't know, I would say more adult in that way, but it is still very easy to follow and very enjoyable. And I can't wait to read this one because I need to know what is happening with all of these characters that I love so much. Now the next series I want to talk about, I'm not sure if it's so much a series because I've heard you can read these completely out of order. You can read them, um, you could read like one book in these series or none of the books, you know what I mean? Like you don't need to read them in any kind of order. And that would be A Close and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. Sorry, A Closed and Common Orbit. I can't talk. A Closed and Common Orbit. My god, I cannot speak today. Anyway, this book, the first one is called A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. I feel like a lot of people have read that one. And it follows a girl who is kind of running from her father because of her past. And she gets basically put on this ragtag team of a bunch of, I want to call them smugglers. Now, the subsequent books in the series are about other characters within that first book. So it's like building upon their stories, which is why I don't think that you really need to read them in any kind of order. I think you could just read one and not read the others, but I feel like reading the first one is advantageous because you get to know a little bit about the characters that are in the other novels. But from what I've heard, these build really well on what is already existing, but also I feel like you could read it and not necessarily need to know a whole lot about the characters. So I really like that Becky did that. This is, I think, one of the most anticipated series for me and probably why I haven't read it yet. So the first one, and I believe all of them, are really character driven for me. And I was so in love with the characters in the first one. But what I've heard about the subsequent ones is that it's more story because a lot of people were saying that the first one really lacked in story because it was so character focused. So I'm kind of nervous because I loved the first one so, so much and I'm nervous about the kind of change in the type of story that is being told and the way that it is being told. So that's why I haven't picked it up yet, but I've heard so many great reviews. People who love the first one continue to love this series. So I don't know why I haven't really continued to read it, but it is a goal of mine to finish this series by the end of the year. So hopefully when I do that, I'll be able to let you guys know if it is super different, if it's still enjoyable, all of that kind of stuff. But this is high, high, high on my list of series that I want to finish before 2019 is over. Now the next book I have here, the next series that I have here, I believe there is going to be a fourth one, but I'm not 100% sure, but I did want to include this because this is a book that I've had for a really long time that I was really excited to read, but for some reason that excitement kind of died down for me. And I don't know if it's because it was a very hyped book and then eventually people just started thinking, oh, it's not like not worth the hype that kind of thing. I actually have a bookmark in here. I am technically on page 24, although I did set this book aside and stop reading it. And it'd be Reaper at the Gates by Sabah Tahir. Now, the reason why I think that the, like the big reason why I want to read this is I love these characters so much. Helene is my favorite. And I just think that she is one of the most complex characters. And a lot of times when people read this series, when they first start out, they, they really don't like her. Like they genuinely hate her as a character. Like even outside of her being like a complete bitch in the first book, people just don't like her character. And I think that that's kind of sad because she has some of the most amazing character growth that I've read in a novel. And there's a lot of like, magic in it too. I know a lot of people who picked up this book weren't expecting there to be so much magic, but there absolutely is. Also, this is a technically YA book, but I feel like it has enough adult content in it. There were a lot of times when I was reading this that I was like, holy shit, I can't believe she did that in this book. It makes it feel older. And I feel like this could be considered new adult, which I know isn't necessarily a genre that is, I don't know, like, represented it's not a genre that people really consider like an actual genre but i personally do and i would consider this new adult and it's just it's very in-depth it's very magical it's very brutal at the same time and i just love the characters and the overall story is pretty interesting as well with all the magic and like the betrayals and what the magic means to Leia's people and how Elias is supposed to help her and Elias' story throughout it is really cool. But definitely 100% the reason why I love this series so, so much is because of Helene. I think that she is just a very, very, I don't know, just she's a very wonderful, well-developed character. And I will give it to Sabah. She does write some fantastic, fantastic characters in her books. The next book I have here, I gobbled up the series. It's actually the series that got me back into reading. I was living in North Carolina, and when I lived in California previously, because my ex-husband was in the military, when I lived in California, I was reading a lot, and it was when I binged a lot of Stephen King books, because there was a period of time where all of his new releases, I didn't have them. So I did get all those and read all those. So in, in California, I was reading, but when we moved to North Carolina, I think that my depression kind of took hold, and I wasn't enjoying it as much, and I was picking up maybe 
like a book every couple of months, which for me is a big deal because I read on average 10 books a month. And so when I found this series, I read the first one and it made me think of that feeling that Harry Potter gave me, where I wish magic existed. And I found it very, I don't know, soothing in a way. And the series that I'm talking about is Miss Peregrine's, but it would be a map of days. This is the most recent and the last one that is coming out. Now, I think that this series is written pretty for a pretty young audience. I would say it's teen, maybe YA, but definitely on the teen side. I really, I don't know, I just, I feel something about this book for some reason. It's very nostalgic to me, and I know a lot of people really, really, really don't like this series. But basically what this follows is our main character, Jacob, is going to visit his grandpa, and his grandpa is kind of what everybody else thinks losing his mind and when Jacob goes to visit him he actually sees this creature and he sees this creature kill his grandpa and he goes a little bit crazy because of it he is not admitted but he does go start to see a therapist he does get on some medicine and his dad and him go on this trip to this place that they have heard talk about I don't remember if it's like some place that his grandpa used to talk about or a place that has like a site that they both want to see whatever it is but his dad decides to get him out of the house or they decide to go on this trip I don't remember and it's been so long since I read that but Jacob essentially goes through this portal to a different time and that is where a lot of younger children and then a woman called Miss Peregrine live and they do not age and that's just like the basics of the story obviously this is the fourth book in a series as well as there was like a little short story compilation that came out at the same time so there's a lot of backstory on this series and a lot has happened the reason why I'm hesitant to read this, in this book, a lot of the children from that loop, because they're called loops where they live, have come to Jacob's world. And I don't know how, 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 how they're going to pull that off. I read the first like 30 pages of this book and was like, all right, I'm not in the mood for this. It's very different from the rest of the series. And I think that overall, the first one is the strongest. The second one's okay. The third one was a hot mess. And I'm really, really worried about this one which is why I don't think I've finished it. Also, there are so many pages in this book. It's the biggest of the entire series and I'm not exactly sure why, but I am really excited to finish it eventually. I wanna, I wanna close the chapter of these chapters and be done with it and see what I think overall. I am once again, still really worried that this is going to be a pretty weak ending. I haven't heard anybody talk about it. Like I said, it's not even a really loved series to begin with, so. We'll see what I think of it when I get to it. Now, the last series I wanna talk about is the series that I have been reading for a very long time. I got into it a little bit later. Right now, I'm listening to it on audiobook because I just don't wanna carry this book around with me because it is a big ass hardcover and I don't have the time, but it would be Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas, Maas whatever. <laughs> um, this is the final book in this series. This is the final book in the Throne of Glass series and it is massive and the reason why i'm taking my time with this is for two reasons one there's a lot of in my mind negative connotation with sarah and i think it's because a lot of people it was really popular and it boosted a lot of people's channels last year to talk shit basically about her i saw a few reviews that really made sense to me even i talked about like the uh, accord of frost and starlight drama that happened but i think because there were so many people in that bubble who saw that those videos were getting views and started posting such negative things and like negative reviews and just basically tearing her apart, it kind of made me afraid to read this. Like, I didn't want to have that bad taste in my mouth going into this. And the other reason why I haven't read it is this is one of my favorite series of all time. I know a lot of people think that it's crap. A lot of people think that it's overhyped and that's totally fine, but I love this series. I love the characters. They have some of the best growth in series ever. I love the overall storyline. I love the magic. I love the friendships. I love the love in it, like the relationships. I truly like it. Now this is, I think like the eighth book in a series, in the series. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this is the eighth book because we do have, um, what's it called? The Assassin's Blade as well as Tower of Dawn. Tower of Dawn wasn't supposed to be a big novel. It was supposed to be just like a little um, like a little add-on to the story. So I'm really glad that she did turn it into a big book though because I love that book. That's one of my favorites of the whole series. So I'm really excited to read this. I'm just really hesitant. So I've been periodically listening to it on audiobook. I'm probably like a fourth of the way through. Like I said, this is massive. It has the Bible pages. Like there's like 900 pages or something in this book. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So. I am really excited to read it. I'm just, and I am kind of reading it. I'm just also very hesitant because there's so much surrounding the series and so much surrounding Sarah. And I'm just nervous. And I feel like a lot of people can probably 
relate to that, but this is the one that I am probably going to be ruined once I finally do finish it, unfortunately. All right, guys, so those are all of the series that I still have on my shelves that I would like to finish. Recently, I have unhauled a lot of books and a lot of series went with those books. So this did slim out the series that I need to finish, but looking at my shelves more so recently, I've been really paying attention to books that I do want to read, series that I do want to continue with, but I've started to realize that I think I might be one of those people who really, really likes standalone and really, really likes duologies. I used to love series. I used to love really getting into a series, but I think it takes a really special author to be able to pull that off, to be able to continue the story and it not lose steam essentially. But I'm really excited to finish a lot of these. There's a few of these that, like I said, I'm a little bit hesitant about, but I still want to be done with this series to say that I did actually finish them because a lot of these I've been reading for a really long time. But anyway, let me know down below a series that you wish you could finish for whatever reason you're really struggling to finish it, whether the series fizzled out for you or, you know, like with me, some of the drama surrounding these authors, let me know down below. But I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.